Hey everyone, so today I wanted to talk to you about a technique called soul collage and the word is basically just exactly the way it sounds, soul and collage. It was invented by a therapist, uh, Sina Frost, and it was actually introduced to me by a client. I always say that my best techniques and ideas and inspirations come from my clients. So this has really, really been a powerful te technique. I was trained in it as a facilitator, and I'm going to show you some examples. I was actually talking to another therapist the other day and trying to explain it to her, and then I thought, you know what, I'll just make a video. That way you can see, she can see a little bit about what it actually looks like instead of me just talking about it. So the first thing I want to say about soul collage cards is usually when people make collages, or at least when my friends and I used to in high school, we have a big piece of paper and we would put a lot of phrases on it and inspirational things, you know, go for it or live your fullest life or whatever, things like that. Or it might be um, specific to a person. These types of collages are very, very different. For one thing, you're starting on a very small field. So a soul collage card is about this big. It's about uh, five inches by eight and a half inches. Not quite, but sometimes when I'm making them with clients, I'll just take a piece of regular construction paper and fold it in half to sort of get this size. So it's not that big. If you put it, you know, like here's my hand, you're really constrained with the size. And what that does is it intensifies the final image, the final product. Another thing about soil collage cards is you're not supposed to use words. And it's really hard a lot of times for people to not use words because they're so used to it. You know, we use words all the time and speaking and writing and communicating. But actually by not using words, you are again training the person looking at it, who is usually yourself, to really interpret the images and really pay attention to how the images are interacting with each other. Uh, one of the things I love about images and thinking about them is they communicate information so quickly tens of thousands of times faster than reading or listening. Think about when you see a logo, you know, if you see the Nike swoosh, you don't necessarily, you see that swoosh and you think Nike, sports, sneakers. You know, if it was just Nike, we make really cool sneakers and you're reading each separate word, it wouldn't have the same impact. So logos and colors and the symbolism that are in logos really get quickly, that information um, gets to our brain quickly and lodges in there. Um, the last thing that I usually tell people about soul collage cards is that it's good to have one image for the background and then you add other images. So you can either make your collage card sort of intuitively. I love to do that, especially in the beginning with people. I just have them cut out a bunch of images that seem interesting. They sort of flip through magazines and I say, if your eye catches on an image for more than three seconds, cut it out. Even if you have no idea why you're looking at that image. There's something about that image that's speaking to some part of your brain. There's some message there. You may not end up using the image, doesn't matter, just cut it out. So get as many images as you can. Then I will have the person, here's, um, here's one actually that I'm working on right now. Um, you take the images and sort of just see what looks interesting. So this, for example, is a picture of a boy and there's, he's looking through a window and there are some little bulbs, forced bulbs, you know, of plants and he's kind of all bundled up. You don't necessarily have to know what it means. In fact, I really like the first few times to have people not know what the outcome is going to be and just see what looks interesting. Um, after you've made the card, so this one, again, I'm still working on it. I feel like it's not quite done. I feel like there's other things that I want to add to it, but I'm not quite sure what they are. Um, you then uh, take the card and when it's done, you put this special kind of uh, plastic sleeve over it and it really makes a nice finished product. The great thing is too, there is glue tape on the back so you can actually take them out if you want to um, work on them more or change them in some way. Um, for example, this one, this is one of the very first ones I made and I love it. It's really one of my favorites. So you can see there's a woman over here, some pumpkins, and like a tree with what looks like pumpkins in the tree. And 
a lot of people say, well, you know, what does it mean? What do you do with them? There's so many different ways to interpret them. Um, there's one exercise, I'm not going to tell you right now uh, what it is because it kind of gives it away. It's kind of interesting to see what people come up with when they do this exercise with me. Um, and it's interesting because as you interpret the cards, you're the only one that can really interpret your own cards. Nobody can look at a card and say, oh, well, you know, clearly you have, uh, you know, issues with pumpkins or things like that. It's not like that. They're also not like tarot cards, so you're not reading the future. You are looking at these images and making your own interpretations. And maybe someone else has some suggestions, but ultimately it's you. And you can interpret it differently over time. So as you make these cards, it's very specific to you. Somebody else could look through the same magazine that you did and pick out different images and arrange them in a different way and then have a different meaning from it. So it is a collage of your soul, of your relationship to the images. And as you get to learn more about soul collage, and I might make another video soon, each of them embodies an energy which relates to an archetype. So the whole concept of soul collage cards and energies and how they reflect your psyche is very much tied up in Jungian archetypes. So there are ways that you can also with other people do different exercises, get different interpretations and answer questions in your own life. It's a lot of levels, very interesting stuff. So this last one I'm going to show you, this is also one that I did a while ago. I don't, uh, you know, I've made this years ago. Uh, there's a hummingbird and some berries and some elephants. I have no idea what it means. I could spend some time, you know, reflecting, meditating on it, and maybe years from now I might have an idea. Other times I might make a very specific card about a person or a situation, and I know exactly what it means. And it helps me to remember, sometimes like a mantra or an affirmation. Sometimes a card can help me remember something, and I can keep that card close by. And nobody else has to know what it is. They might just say, oh, that's an interesting thing. But I know what it is, and I can see it, and I can use it as a reminder in my own life. So I hope that this brief overview has been helpful. And I think I'm probably going to be doing some more in the future because it is such a powerful tool, and I really want to share it with you. Thanks.